Hey, Christy. Hey, Cynthia. Thanks for agreeing to do do this with me. I yeah. love doing these interviews and it's just so fun to chat through the different things that people are doing that I find super interesting. And you are doing some of like the, like the, a lot of different things that I love, which is cool because it crosses over multiple kind of interests, um, what you're doing. And so I wondered if you could kind of talk a little bit about Craft and Mercantile, which is like your overarching brand, right? Yeah. Um, growing roots. Yeah. Growing Roots. That's right. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So do you want to talk a little bit about Growing Roots partners and then like what all falls under there, which one of them is Craft and Mercantile? So yeah. Yeah. So Growing Roots Partners is, you know, I describe it as a community event and farmer's market coordinator. So we're based in Chester County, PA, and we coordinate three weekly farmer's markets in Chester County that are year round, as well as a monthly artisan market called Craft and Mercantile, and that's a night market, and a number of other community events, including kind of like our signature annual event, which is called Good Food Fest. So we have- Which is how I met you. (laughs) Yeah, which is how we met. Yeah. So I have kind of like many different brands within the brand, all kind of centered around like cultivating small businesses, small farmers and producers with a pretty heavy emphasis on agriculture, like local PA food, and also like local, anything local and handcrafted. So really maker focused, producer only. Those are kind of buzzwords you'll often hear us use to describe our events. And then my other passion and focus of the business is really like community. So we also help coordinate a number of like existing community events that happen in different communities that we're already a part of. So we are involved in the Malvern Business Association, spring and Christmas events, the Downingtown Fall Fest, as well as the Radnor Fall Fest, a little bit outside of our jurisdiction. So we have some events that are our own, like created by us, and then some that we are kind of contracted out to produce for other community organizations. And really the focus of all of them is to support small businesses, but also like to support the community that we're working in and to make sure that we're kind of activating the space when we bring an event in and we're working in tandem with the communities to make it like successful for everyone. Wow. How many events do you, do you know how many events you do a year? I didn't even realize it was that many. Like, I could, Yeah, I could do a quick count. Well, I do seven craft and mercantiles, two Malvern events, Downingtown Fall Fest, So that's seven Um, plus three is 10. Radnor Fall Fest is 11. Good Food Fest is 12. A couple other like really one or two small ones. And then we have some like mini events that we do at our farmer's market. So they're part of our like weekly market. Same time, same place. We just like add additional programming. So they just- Yeah, so that's not even counting the weekly markets. Those are big events that are kind of individual. Yeah. So then all summer long, you're doing weekly farmer's markets in how many different towns? So we have one in Eagle View, which is Exton on Thursday afternoons from three to six 30. And then we have two on Saturday mornings from nine to one. So one in Malvern and one in Downingtown that run at the same time. Nice. So do you know, like, was that pretty much the community is what community makers, is that kind of what inspired Growing Roots Partners to begin with? Yeah, I think so. So the founder of Growing Roots, Lisa O'Neill, passed over the baton to me about four years ago. So she founded Growing Roots. Really, I think the focus was originally on farmers markets and local agriculture, which is always kind of like I've, you know, made clear is the center of what we do. And then it kind of grew into community events from there. So it's kind of similar of how my, you know, my tenure with Growing Roots has taken the same course. Um, I started off with just farmers markets because I took over just after COVID when like events weren't happening. And so I kind of got, you know, that under my feet and then kind of started building on the events and actually um, created the concept of craft and mercantile in 2021. So the focus was always really on like empowering local food artisans and farmers and supporting local agriculture at its core. And I think just with that and with farmer's market, like the community piece comes along, like that's a huge part of farmer's markets and farmer's market culture in general is like to support the community. So I think it all just kind of makes sense. So that was the original inspiration. And then for me, like I grew up as, you know, my family ran a small business on, you know, Main Street, if you will, King Street and Malvern to be more specific. And so like my parents just kind of like, that's all I knew is like self-employment and small business. And it was always like a passion of mine, I think just from like growing up in it and, and then food became 
a huge passion of mine when I was in college studying hospitality and, and working in restaurants. So, so, so people can, so artists, makers, and anyone who's like pro- local producers can just submit to be involved in these farmers markets or the craft and mercantile event, like ongoing throughout the year. Yeah. So the farmer's market process is like a rolling application year round. We really focus the mark, the farmer's market specifically on food and agricultural products. We've only recently started introducing like makers and crafters into the farmer's markets. Oh, fun. I didn't know that you were doing that. Yeah. So we build a really great network of, you know, artisans and makers um, through our craft and mercantile markets. And so those applications happen three times a year. So there's like three like seasons, if you will. And they're kind of grouped together with three or two markets at a time. So we open our applications like three times a year in March. We actually just opened one set yesterday and then the last set will open in July. And those are a juried process. So the farmer's market aren't necessarily juried applications. They are based on need and like the market balance and what's needed at the market. Mm-hmm. And then the craft and mercantile process is a little bit more of a competitive juried process. So because our venues compared to like most like craft markets, I think are much smaller. Mm-hmm. We keep it pretty like between, I think our smallest is 30 and our largest is 40. So it's a pretty small group compared to like maybe some of our competitors. So that juried process is a little more competitive. We do get like way more applications, probably almost like double the applications that we can accept. Uh, we do our best to try to keep fresh new vendors in, but also to continue working with the makers that, you know, have done well in the past, have been great to work with. Our shoppers love their products. They Mm -hmm. love our shoppers. It's just like a great relationship. And so that, that process is juried. And then our good food fest application is also a juried process where we really focus on farmers and agricultural products first. Mm -hmm. And then kind of next after that is any like food product that uses like a percentage of agricultural products. So we actually ask our um, applicants to give the percentage of local and ingredients um, that are included in their products. And we kind of go from like hundred percent down. So like the priority goes to farmers and food makers. And then the next priority is like to food and drink makers that are using agricultural products. So that's kind of how we prioritize applications for Good Food Fest. That's awesome. So how do you envision its growth and evolution in the years to come? I don't know if you can really speak a lot to that. I know you and I have talked about that personally, but I just think it'd be interesting for other people to hear. Your yeah. Thoughts. The growth for me is always like, I, I think I, we, everyone, I joke with everyone about this thing. Everyone that's close to me kind of knows like, I'll never be satisfied with like yeah. the number of people, the number of vendors. Like for me, it's just you know, my business is contingent on like the number of vendors because that's how I make money. And, Mm -hmm. but for me, it's like the number of shoppers that come to the markets to the events is like what's most important to me because like at the end of the day, my passion lies and like my business is suited to support the vendors that are part of each one of my events. So my, my goal for growth is always just like more people, more visitors, more shoppers, which of course would translate into hopefully more sales for the vendors and to really get like our communities in a mindset of shopping with local producers. That's more of like a goal than it is like growth. But for me, I would envision growing each of my events and markets in that way to the point where I could like have more staff and be able to focus on some like higher level business development tasks and to pull myself like a little bit away from the day to day. I think I'll always be involved in the day to day, but to be able to grow a team to help run the event through there. Yeah. I've just recently like been able to do that on a smaller scale this year. And it's been like kind of life-changing just to have like other people's opinions and contributions and collaboration. Like I'm a huge fan of collaboration. So like, I've seen the power of it and I want it to continue because like, I by no means think that like I have the answers to everything Mm -hmm. and I know the things that I'm not good at. And I'm really, I believe in like, you know, working to everyone's strengths, aces Mm -hmm. in their places, if you will. Like, I think that it, it's been like, I've just seen it be so successful. So I think my, my goal for growth is really just to continue building our, you know, vendors out, like more vendors at all the markets, which translates to more money to spend on marketing, to gather more people to come to the markets. And then with that, to be able to grow our team, to continue building. So it's really like funny business because it's definitely not like a direct 
you don't see like a direct return on your investment usually. And there's yeah. so many variables that go into like bringing people out to events. So I think a lot of it is actually time, which is hard for me because I'm impatient and building, like building <laughs> your following. And it's hard to know like what makes people come and what doesn't. And like, what is, you know, what is the, what I should be spending my focus on. So, you know, I think it's kind of like a learning process for me. Yeah. As you goes. know, I think that your events kind of remind me of being in a market in like Italy, you know, when I like 20 years ago, when I was like the first time I was in Italy and I was like traveling around, I remember I went to this town called Luca and there was like a maker's market. I mean, that's just normal there. You yeah. Know? yeah. And I think our culture really lacks that kind of like mentality and also just like appreciation for those kinds of things, like spending a little bit more to have something that was made by someone who's local or who's someone who like who handcrafted it, just the the appreciation. And I feel like it's changing, like we're all beginning to see that movement, but it's really just, it's so nice to see like you doing all of these things kind of blending together because it feels like to me, much, so much in alignment with like the slow living movement that is really important to all of our health, you know, and just like enjoyment of our life and just being able to like really soak in the small moments and like, you know, everything being fresh and local, it's just better, better for you. And it's like tastes better and all that stuff. And it just feels like, like that to me somehow translates to like European living and like, let's bring more of that here. <laughs> Yeah. It's really funny that you say that because I was actually like a lot of the inspiration for like the path that I'm on today. In a past life, I worked for a travel company and I used to take teenagers abroad to Europe. So I got like the travel bug when I was in college, I studied abroad in Italy and I had just like started kind of dipping my toes into this idea of like clean food. I think I really got caught up in like the wellness, like Instagram things, maybe very different than kind of where I am now, but it was when I got kind of how I got started. It was just, it was there before I got to local food, I got to like clean food. And when I studied abroad in Italy, like I always joke that like I would eat, it was like the three P's pizza, pasta, panini, and then like gelato <laughs> doesn't like fit into that. But like, that's all I ate. Like I, I never cooked. It's so sad because there was like a beautiful farmer's market open every day, right at the bottom of my street. But I literally just like ate all the, the food. food is so good. There. Yeah. That's what I was there for. I was like, I'm studying abroad to like eat food. Like I didn't buy souvenirs. I didn't like shop for clothes. It was like food everywhere I go. And I like never felt better. Like in my like skin and my body. Like I didn't feel like I was like gaining weight or bloated or whatever from like just eating carbs. Like I know it's crazy. I know. Like when I same, we were there in 2019 and we were eating all the things like I just don't eat here. And then I always come back and, and I, I got started eating the same things. I'm like, it's not working. <laughs> yeah. I got very sick. I got yeah. sick. When I came home because like oh. I ate like out at a restaurant, like one of my first meals home. And I like shared food with somebody and like I got sick and they didn't. And it was just like, my body was like having like a reaction to the food. Yeah. And that's kind of what I actually usually cite as like the starting point for me. And I kind of became obsessed with this like idea of like, oh, I'm so sorry. This idea of like, you know, that we all know now of like how different our food systems are and how it's funny when you talk about money, because there it's not more expensive to eat that way. It just mm -hmm. is like the only yeah. option probably yeah. more expensive deep processed food there, to be honest. But, and then I really started to get into local food and I've told this story so many times, so I always feel silly, but my, I, my first job after college was managing the restaurant at Wybrook farm, which was a sustainable farm and whole animal butcher shop. And that's when I like, just kind of dove head first into local food and kind of never turned back. So yeah, that there's like a sweet. lot of, yeah, there's actually a lot of European inspiration. I mean, I always thought that I would live in Europe one day. I was like obsessed with like traveling and and the well, European. We can be neighbors one day. <laughs> yeah, European lifestyle when I was in college. It's like now I have a job and I never get to travel anymore. <laughs> and the other inspiration like for Craft and Mercantile was actually from the European Christmas markets. It was like a dream of mine for a long time to go. And I finally got to go uh, my senior year in college and visit some like German and other like Eastern European Christmas markets. And I fell in love with them. And I just love this idea of a night market. And that's like, although it's magical, like yeah. I got to take part in one of them or two of them. And it was, it was kind of, it was magical. Yeah. And that's like where the inspiration from craft and mercantile came from, you know, although we're in like suburbia, and <laughs> it's not a European Christmas market. But it's the just, people that you draw out there, like it, it yeah. very much felt like that. Yeah. Yeah. 
So there's definitely, I've never really kind of put all of this together in a, you know, combined thought, but there's definitely a lot of like European inspiration. And in, in like that makes a lot of sense. I love hearing that because I never heard that from you either. Yeah. I've never like said, I've never put that together. As soon as you said that, I was like, oh my God. Yeah. Um, yeah well, so. you and I met through the Good Food Fest because Lisa had me working with her on the Good Food Fest brand. Mm -hmm. And so I did the logo with her and then you and I kind of picked up where she left off. And I would just love to hear more about the Good Food Fest because I think that there's something specifically, even just like the European tie, I feel like even that market, I mean, it's huge, but it just very much feels like an experience that's like worth slowly, like walking through and being like a part of and, you know, talking to people and being a part of the community I just would love to hear like a little bit about how the Good Food Fest has like began and like how it's evolved and what does it mean to you in terms of like the, the overarching brand? Yeah. So Good Food Fest got started in 2019 before I came on board and it was really a kind of like dream child that of a project that came out of, you know, there had been a previous event in Philly that was no longer and Lisa and Terry Brett of Kimberton Whole Foods kind of put their heads together and said like this is the opportunity to bring a festival that is focused on like local food and local agriculture to to our area of course also like place perfectly in Kimberton sorry I just like stuttered <laughs> perfectly in Kimberton so Kimberton Whole Foods being our premier sponsor and the event is held at the Kimberton Fairgrounds just around the corner um it's kind of like heart of Chester County kind of perfect space for it but yeah they really just wanted to have an event that was focused on celebrating local agriculture and farmers. That was the mission of, and still is the mission of both Growing Roots, Roots and Kimberton Whole Foods, which is um, pretty awesome just to have that partnership and to align um, mm -hmm. so closely on like what we're both just trying to accomplish um, and community, of course, being the center um, of, of really both of our businesses. And so uh, that First event was in 2019 and then COVID hit and then we brought it back after I had taken over in 2022. So 2022 second annual, 2023 third annual, if you can call it that with a hiatus. So we're technically going into our fourth annual, even though the event started five years ago. And so for me, I mean, I think the best way I could like succinctly describe Good Food Fest is like when everything is really hard and I just want to like give up and have like a normal job. I just, it, this sounds so terrible, but it's true. I'm just like, but I, I, I can't, I can't give up good food fest. Like I can't, I just, it just wouldn't, like I couldn't, I could never give it up. Like <laughs> I have to keep doing it. It has to go on. It really is like kind of my like, like beating heart or life's blood, I guess. And I, and I think that it will, you know, I hope that it will change the world one day, but it basically is like, an amalgamation of everything that we do and represent. So it's an epic farmer's market. It's once a year because it's it's a very large undertaking. So we have basically gathering together all of the farmers and vendors that you may see in the region as far as like Southeast PA and greater Philly area. About 120 of them are in our epic farmer's market, which is housed in like a large barn and two large carnival tents. And then we also have a demo kitchen, which is my favorite part of the event. So live cooking demos presented by our farmers and producers that are there vending at the event, showing you how to incorporate local food like it, at your own kitchen. And that is happening live with samples, which is really great. We were able to grow that this year. We also have a pouring room where we're highlighting like local brewers and cideries, distilleries that use local ingredients in their alcoholic beverages. We have kids activities. We have live farm animals. We have a ton of food trucks, live music from Frog Holler bands, great bluegrass favorite from the area. And so it's really meant to be like a celebration of local agriculture, just on this large scale that you don't normally see in the way that I describe it. And the reason why we do it so big is because I think that it can attract more people than a normal farmer's market. Well, I know that it does obviously, but mm -hmm. it's kind of what I hope to be like the gateway into farmer's markets and local food for people that don't normally go to farmer's markets. So you kind of see this like epic scale and get you excited. And then maybe you're going to go back to find that like maker or farmer that you, you shopped with that day. And then of course it becomes like every farmer's market shopper that every vendor has ever known or seen like comes that day, which is some of the feedback that we get. And I think the best part about it is just that we always hear from, from vendors and, and staff and 
whatnot is like how engaged everyone is and everyone that's there seems like really kind of invested in what it is we are trying to, to, you know, teach or to, to share the message of just like local food and community and just kind of one epic day. So I don't know if I gave it, it justice, but it's, it's yeah, one of the definitely. things like, I always try to like explain it to people. And I think that it's just one of those things that once you have been there, like you get it, it's hard to almost like capture it in words. We even have a hard time capturing it in video. Cause it's just like, how do you explain like everything that's happening? Yeah. Um, all at once and the energy that's there is, is just like it's next level so yeah so it's the first weekend in november right and yeah, for yeah so it's like pretty good weather pretty mild i guess it could be cold or hot depending but it seems yeah. like it, each, it's each hot year. last years yeah yeah and then there's like huge three huge tents and like an indoor barn yeah so there's a big indoor barn with two huge tents there are like 40 by 160 feet and that's where all like the vent farmers market vendors are mm-hmm. and then there's a smaller tent where the demo kitchen is yep. and then on the other side there's two big pavilions for the pouring room and for seating for kids activities for animals and then out in the parking lot we have all the food trucks and you have like a vip experience right that you can buy it's like a little bit more where you give give away certain things the swag and stuff like yeah that. we yeah. have like a extra hour of shopping with a limited amount of people a limited amount of tickets for sale so that you can kind of shop without the crowds and with that you get a free bag and some free giveaways from the vendors so that's our vip ticket this this year we're actually also launching another ticket which is called the local lover and that's really a combination of the vip and like a, a fundraising investment so for anyone that's really invested in local food and loves us and wants to support the event and see it continue to happen. There is a higher price ticket where part of the proceeds will go to the Chester County Food Bank, part of the proceeds will go to supporting the event, and then you also get the VIP access and and everything that comes along with that ticket. Awesome. Yeah. I had asked, like, I had a list of things to ask you, and I think you covered, like, a few of them in that one question, so it's it's good, but I did want to ask you, did you have any memorable stories that showcase the impact of these events, either the Good Food Fest or any of the events that you hold that you feel like would be, you know, interesting for us to hear about? Yeah, I think, I mean, Good Food Fest, the first year I did it was probably one of the most like memorable experiences, I think, of my career. Just reading like the testimonials from the vendors or the emails that they sent, like, in thank you, just of like, what a wonderful day it was. I, I know this one quote that I always, I always reference was from Julia Inslee from Locust Hollow Sheep Farm, who I love and I love her products um, and has done the event every year. And she said, like, she basically said, it's like every farmer's market vendor, shopper, and like friend that I've ever known was there. And it was like one big family reunion. Um, and that like everyone was so engaged and happy to be there and, and to learn about um, their products. And so like just reading like everyone's feedback from from that event I think but one of my most memorable just like I think memories or whatever it is like achievements I guess accomplishments is it's been like a couple years now but one of our farmers at the Malvern Farmers Market um, he's actually Amish but he does have a phone for business he called to tell me like just a few hours after market one day like he must have called me as soon as he got home and counted up everything to tell me that like he hit a sales record that he like never thought that he would ever hit and that it was like the best market he's ever had. And he just like had to call and tell me that. Aww. And in that same hour, the other farmer that was there texted to say that they also hit a sales record and that it was like the best market they've ever had. So just not only them being successful, but them like sharing that with me, which is like really a special moment. And that's kind of like, it's always what I strive for and moments are pretty great. So I think that and just like a lot of the first, like the first Good Food Fest, the first Crafter Mercantile, seeing seeing like Crafter Mercantile grow from like its baby infancy stages to now where we're like a really well-oiled machine. And actually just recently I had, I had like I, a tough night for like no reason or another, just kind of, you know, tired end of like, the day, always like just always things that happen with events. And one of my vendors handed me an envelope and I got home that day. And I was feeling like not like I was just wasn't feeling that great about myself, like was was feeling like defeated a little bit. And I read I opened the note and it said, like, thank you so much for everything you do for like our community and for small businesses. And I just was like that just like made me, you know, when you're feeling unmotivated and feeling like dejected, just like made me realize like why I do what I do. So that was like 
like a week ago. So <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I love hearing that. I definitely can attest to like, I I come to the Good Food Fest uh, just as a sponsored table and uh, a couple times. One year I couldn't make it, but it was just amazing to hear the conversations that were happening. And like you said, the people and like, yeah, I saw friends and, you know, different people that are in mere or parallel industries, but also met a lot of people and had a lot of like uh, incredible conversations, made connections that were beneficial for, you know, my business and just and, and everything. And so I definitely can attest to that. And I feel like it's an experience that, you know, if it's something that whether you're a family person or just like a single person or kind of like any age so you could go to the good food fest and enjoy it. Cause there, you know, like you said, there's music, there's drinks, there's, there's animals, there's demo kitchen, there's all kinds of vendors. I mean, like there's something for everyone. And I feel like that's one of the things I really appreciated, like having small children and being able to like bring them to the event and like have things for them to do. And, and just, yeah, like everybody enjoys it. So it was just yeah. cool. Just that's kind of the goal for all of our events. It's like a little something for everyone. I think that makes them well-rounded, but just like a little aside for Good Food Fest, kids under 12 are free. So we hope that that makes it a little bit more or less cost prohibitive and tickets for early birds are $5 up until the month before the event. So they'll go on sale July 15th and then up until like October 3rd, they'll be $5. And then the month leading up to it, they, and at the door, they're $10. So it can really be an affordable day if you're bringing the kids, they're free. And if you get your tickets ahead of time, they're $5. So, and people are giving out like samples of food and stuff too. Yeah. 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 And um, I mean, and when, when asked what the ticket, you know, fee is for, we get this question, you know, occasionally first and foremost, of course it supports the event. It makes the event happen, but there's also four free full cooking demos and a recipe that you get to take home. So that in and of itself, I think is worth the price. But again, like free samples, live music, kids activities, all these things that kind of, you know, I think make the the value of the hours of work that you give away of your life. (laughs) If that that doesn't mean heart and soul that you put into this, I mean that's something too. And the on the people, the team of people that you, um, yeah. yeah, I went to that event and I literally, I don't know if you you probably don't read all my emails, but I had so much fun that day of that Good Food Fest event the recent one where you like got all the sponsors together and I I don't know it was just like such a good day and I felt like so energized when I got home and I was telling Steven I'm like these people are awesome like the group of sponsors that you have pulled together are just some really good people and I also wanted to just bring that up did you want to talk at all about like sponsorship opportunities because I feel like it is if it's somebody who if you are someone who has a business and you like enjoy supporting community, this is like a great opportunity to get involved. And I would just love to hear more about like what kind of sponsorship opportunities you have. Yeah. Like, yeah. What you really get with that. Yeah. So we have a number of different sponsorship opportunities. I think the best way that I can kind of open this is is one of the sponsors I had like a a follow-up call with after the event and she told me that you know she literally didn't even have time to go to the bathroom which is much what most of the vendors would say but you don't necessarily always think that of like the sponsors they're not necessarily selling anything it's more of an informational table but she said that like she didn't even have time to step away from the table or go to the bathroom or check catch her breath because people were so engaged the entire time so I think that really speaks to the audience that we capture. They're really committed to, you know, supporting everything local and everything community and anyone that supports Good Food Fest. And so we have sponsorship opportunities ranging from $500 to $5,000. Our two top tier sponsorship levels do offer table space at the event. So for our cultivar and cream of the cop sponsors do get table space at the event. And then the two lower tiers get marketing opportunities of different ranges, which you can read on our website. Cynthia helps us put together a beautiful Yeah, I'll put the links all all out. Yeah. (laughs) So, I mean, we really are intentional too about the sponsors um, that we work with. We want to be support and be supported by folks and organizations that are um, aligned with the mission and vision of supporting local agriculture, local food and community. And it is a far reaching audience. So we are reaching Chester County, of course, but surrounding areas as well. I like to say like greater Philly, 
And we do have that data as far as like where tickets are coming in from. So I think any organization that wants to align with supporting small businesses, supporting local food and agriculture, supporting community organizations, not to mention aligning with Kimberton Whole Foods as the premier sponsor. I mean, who wouldn't want to align with a with an organization like that? So you're really part of this community that we have cultivated and, you know, the support cannot happen without the sponsors. I know that that, that is a, it ob- sounds obvious, but this event is quite the monster of a, an event and we want it to grow so that we can use the proceeds from this event eventually to help really in, enhance the farmer's market culture of our region, just to, to drive more um, communities to support their local farmers markets and vendors and to make it, you know, maybe one day we can come close to competing with more conventional ways of consuming. So that's really my ultimate goal with Good Food Fest is to be able to grow everything together and to invest in, to, in the farmers market, starting with growing roots and then kind of branching out from there. And then to be able to offer like mini grant programs to our farmers and producers um, to help them be more successful. So it all kind of comes back full circle. We really use Good Food Fest too, to like help promote farmers markets in general and all of our events kind of work in tandem with each other to get people, you know, shopping with their local vendors, whether it's at Craft and Mercantile, <coughs> sorry, whether it's at our farmers markets or at Good Food Fest. So they all kind of help promote each other. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing all that and for everything that you do. I think it's like you said, it, you have some hard days. That was actually one of the questions, but you talked about it a little bit. You have some hard days, but like the payoff is like all that you're putting into the community and it's definitely felt. So anyway, I am just so grateful that you took this time to talk with me and and I look forward to the Good Food Fest this year. Yeah, thank you. Sunday, November 3rd. I should plug that. <laughs> yeah. Take- yeah, I'll definitely share all your links too. So all yeah. right. Well, I will talk to you soon. Okay.